Welcome to Touch by the Lord, a program that will build your faith, hope, and trust in the Lord. We are so grateful to God for our lives. God has kept us throughout the whole week. He's kept you and I. And if we are still alive, we should not take it for granted because life is a privilege, not a right. Many people slept with us. Today, they are no more with us. If you and I are alive, I want to say thank you to God. Last week, we were so blessed by the testimony of our dear choir master, Eugene Atasam of Sunny FM. What he went through, it was only God. It has not been an easy journey. Yeah. But God has kept him. If God kept you, Jonathan Sam, mm. he will keep you no matter what. Exactly. Do you have a testimony to share? Please take our numbers on the screen. Call us and we'll give you the opportunity to share live to bless someone mm. out there. Mm. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, TBL TV. Like, comment, and share like our instagram and facebook pages and the lord will bless you today choir master is in the house again to continue with his testimony so we'll tell me now we'll share me when you pay answer she now by yanni say we don't have my ready if you are watching and listening to me man is nothing we are like grass today we are up tomorrow we wither. Yeah. Whatever you are doing, give your life to Jesus mm. and he will sustain you in times of trouble. Mm. Uncle. Hi, oh, go on, Master. <laughs> Last week was so serious. Oh, glory to Jesus. <laughs> the way God kept you. It's amazing. And you saw your navel burning. Yes. And your praise came down. Yes. But we thank God that your spirit was lifted up again. Yes. yes. Today we are continuing. Thank you. So they, they took you to 37 and yes. then yes. they started attending to you. Yes. So let's, let's continue. Yes. So I there. was at the surgical emergency. Mm. That's where I was taken. And they had to I mean, take care of me for, I think, three days. I was there for three days. Mm. Uh, but whilst I was on that bed, mm. uh, they had to peel off the hanging skin to mm. see, I mean, from my legs, my hands, and just to get a very clean yeah. wound to attend to. So, uh, but as I was worshiping, mm. I continued with the worship. Mm. Uh, I told you, like, me from my shui, I'm not sure. And so when I saw it in the midst of the worship, uh, my spirit dropped a bit mm. because I mean, since childhood, I've had a problem with my, yeah, yeah, so uh, it, it got me a bit scared. But nevertheless, to the glory of God, I kept on worshiping mm. till we got to a surgical emergency. And when I was on the bed and the nurses and doctors came attending to me, I was worshiping. I worshiped to the point where I went silent and I saw myself in a dark room. Mm. It was like I fell asleep. And I saw myself in a dark room, no windows, no doors. Nothing. Nothing. It was a wow. very dark In the place. midst of the worship? Yes. Mm. Yes, but proud to this, I've had two dreams, mm. all about darkness. Yeah. When I was in the dark and I was running mm. out of the darkness. Mm. And so when I saw that and I was in the ICU, then I had another flashback. Mm. Said, okay, so this darkness I had had in the dream, this is the meaning. So the place was so dark mm. and the voice came so loudly mm. and clearly that you have come to the place of death and you are wow. not going back. Wow. And I know I was struggling to get up, but it was not working. How I came back is God. So when, when, when I opened my eyes, I saw the doctors and nurses all around me. I was like, I asked them, where am I? They said, you are 37. Then they took me to the main ward and they put a drip on me. And that was the, that was the last drip I had mm. on me till I was taken to the main ward. That is allied and plastics, 37. Mm, mm. Because after my veins couldn't take any drip. Wow, why? Yes, I, I don't know. Amazingly, it couldn't. They tried and tried. 
and even at the word they will give me a drip today or let's say in an hour's time it will it will be blocked hey. and so then when i was in the icu they had to um, create a central line and that's when they take you from your chair I mean, sometimes some people do, they can take it from their legs. But for me, no vein anywhere. Wow. Yeah, so they have to, I mean. All your vein vanished. Vanished. So they have to create a, a central line. They did for about, I, I think they did three, three central lines. Mm. One got bad. They had to take me to the treatment room, do another one. And then the second one, a nurse. In fact, the truth is that I have been hearing some of the nurses, some are possessed. Some are agents, demonic agents. I didn't, didn't believe. Really believe till I was at the intensive care unit, Benz. Wow. Yes, I mean, things I saw some of the nurses, uh, it's amazing. So this particular nurse, in, in the name of coming to give me medicine, decided to remove the cover of the, the blanket that was on me. And how she did it, she pulled it and she tore. Hey. Yes, it go, I mean, then they had to, let me do a second one. But the second one they did that she messed it up. They nearly took me to Kolebu because it was not working. They've done it for over, an, I think, almost two hours. They couldn't. And so, so the medicine, they gave it to me to um, keep the place now. I started reacting because it was oh, going down. Yeah. So when they put the needle there, I could feel it. Wow. As for needles and my skin and my body, a lot of them. <laughs> so eventually they managed to get it done and I, I, was, I started receiving the medications and the rest. But from the surgical emergency, they brought me to the allied ward and that was the place things started getting bad. Mm -hmm. yes. I was going to ask you, because yes. you said things started getting so bad. Yes. yes, but I couldn't sleep that day, 20, 25th, the evening, I couldn't sleep. For three days, I couldn't sleep. Why? The pain, the intensity, uh, the excruciating, the, the intensity. I wanted to turn and I couldn't turn a whole lot of things. And the catheter they put on me was also reacting. If I decide to uh, pass urine, the burning sensation, it was unbearable. It was a lot. I couldn't sleep. I'll be screaming the whole day. I'll be shouting out of the pain. Take me out of this place. Take me out of this place. So they thought I was going mad. Mm. Yes, they will say you I mean, are hallucinating. Yes, yes. As for the hallucination, it came up at the ICU and was intense. Mm. It, was, it was deadly. It was deadly. And so uh, eventually they took me out of the surgical emergency to the Allied and Plastics. Then three days after, I started bloating. Started bloating? Yes. I, it's like you grilling an, an animal and you put <laughs> it on. <laughs> I was started. No, mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I started them. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, I mean, uh, go to the private. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't for 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 days, for days. So I remember when they took me to ICU. One of the doctors actually put her fingers, two fingers, into my anus mm. to pull out feces. I mean, it was terrible. And that place too was messed up with the bends. That place my, too. My, my, my everywhere. Anus, everywhere. I mean, so so all over. So, so at what point did they take you to the ICU? They took me to ICU. I've forgotten, but I think after a week, after a week, uh, they took me to ICU because uh, my health started deteriorating. Yeah, your my breath. breath and everything had bloated, and one of my testes, the right one, had just gotten swollen. I mean, like <laughs> three No, Jana Benana. I don't do. Me will be that. Test this, I don't do. Nippon says you. Human, our life is like grass. Yes. Wherever you are, I'm you have to you. humble yourself. Yeah. I was at the hospital, the things I saw. Humble yourself wherever you are. The Bible mm. says it like, who is man that you should be mindful yeah. of? Man whose life is like grass. Mm -hmm. Don't put your hand on your chest and be talking. Mm. Humble yourself because you can be gone. Then in a split second, you can be gone. This is somebody who had encouraged and advised a uh, lot of people. A lot of people. He yeah. was in, the man was in the ward, and somebody was discharged, and he decided, being an elderly person, decided to encourage the the young man. Five minutes after, a man who was strong, five minutes after, it came upon him like a Caesar. The mm. next thing we realized, he was gone. And that is life for you. Somebody too 
had gone for surgery. He was fine. He had been brought to the ward. He was on his bed. He was sitting on his bed. When the nurses came attending to him, they posture that he was on, sitting, he was gone, he was dead. So we have to humble ourselves yeah. because I never saw this coming. Yeah. Even in the midst of my prayers and all the kind of waiting and everything, it happened to me. Yeah. But one thing I know, Joseph told his brothers, you meant it for, for evil, evil, but God has turned it around for our good. Yeah. God knows how to apply the red lights on our lives. Mm. There are things, if God tells you, don't do it, you will do it. Mm. So he will bring situations that will make you incapable at a mm. point. It will make you so worthless. Mm. It, will, it will bring out your weakness. It will take away your self-worth mm. and everything from you. God knows what he's doing. We've heard stories where somebody was in a hurry to go somewhere and then he had a flat tie. Yeah. And he began nagging and complaining and seeing a whole lot of things. But Not God knowing was... apparently God actually allowed it to prevent a fatal accident. Yeah. And so no matter how unfavorable the situation is, yeah. just pray into it and get your strength, I mean, connected to God mm. like the national grid, receive power mm. and wait for the beautification of the Lord. Amen. It will happen. You Amen. just have to wait. It's just a matter of time. Mm. And uh, it wasn't easy. I started bloating. So the head of the doctors, he's the reconstructive surgeon. Mm. And he's a brother. We grew up in the same church yeah. at Calvary Methodist Church. And I want to use this opportunity to thank yeah. um, Captain um, Dr. Kwisin Safo. Mm. He's been so amazing. And I will thank the rest of the Doc, doctors. And God nurses. bless you so yes. much for your good heart. Yes, yes. Yes. So he had to rush me to the intensive care unit mm. because I was bloating. I couldn't breathe well. They had to put oxygen on me, even at the allied ward, mm. before they took me to the intensive care unit. And it was terrible at the intensive care unit. I was on oxygen throughout my stay there. I stayed there for 27 days. And in fact, at the time they even discharged me, they felt I could stay there uh, a little bit because they were monitoring they were one afraid. or two things. Um, things. But I wanted to move to the world. Yeah. And whilst I was there, I realized when they did test, serious because at times, when they, not at times, when they are taking you to the world for surgery, they have to do run numerous tests yes. to see if you would, um, you are, let's say, capable. And your capable. organs, yes. is that right? Yes, so my liver. Yeah. So when they did, did the test, they realized my liver was almost going. Eey. Yes, yes. The, the bends actually affected me. And also my heart, they realized my heartbeat was not normal. Eey. Yes, and it was terrible. And unknowing to me, what would have killed me whilst I was at the intensive care unit, what would have killed me was, would have been the broken rib. That Your I rib was broken? Yes, when I fell, unknowingly, I had broken my rib, my mm. right rib. Mm. But because of the bends yeah. and the pain, yeah. and because of the uh, my inability to turn yourself. to left or right, uh, so the pain, the pain I was I was experiencing from the upper part of my body, especially on my right, mm. I thought it was the bends, yeah. not knowing it was the broken rib that had been infected. Hey. It was that terrible, and so it's God. When God says He will redeem you, when yeah. God says. It is not your, your time. time. It is not your time. Mm. No matter what they do, they will plot, they will plan, they will scheme, they will orchestrate. But God, who is the mighty deliverer, will take you out of it. Amen. But the truth is that if you are not covered, if yeah. you are not in Christ, That's it. then the edge around you is broken. Yeah. The enemy will strike and he will get you. Yeah. So the important thing is to know Jesus Christ yeah. and hide in him. That's true. And he will protect you no matter what. Mm. He will be there for you. And mm. how God worked it out, this doctor came and she decided to examine me after being there for about um, seven days. Mm. Then she put her stethoscope on my chest, as they do. On the left, she could hear a sound, but on the right, she was not hearing anything. Wow. She did it severally, and it was giving her the same results. So she decided to bring in another doctor but she decided to do it the, the next day. So they brought another doctor. The doctor did the same thing, and it was giving them the same results. So they became alarmed. Yeah. And then they called for the tests. 
when they did a test and they saw as they did the history yeah. they saw that it was a broken rib they they also found out there was something there Eesh. so then they detected it was infection. A, a infection they, uh, it had guarded water Eesh. one person one person so the doctor told me that i would have died after four days because it's gotten to a state that was terrible it was very bad to not knowing that was also affecting my breathing mm -hmm. because it's going to yeah. into the lungs yeah. so they had to pull out the water a lot into their stainless steel bowl yellowish a lot Eesh. they had to put the metal i don't know what they put in there put to it bring into, their pass out to, to es, uh, was it water or pass it was like oh, it's a pass like a pass yes yes it was it was terrible even the doctor who was doing the extraction at a point would stop oh, the and then look at his colleague across and <laughs> oh my yes, it's, it's it God is terrible. good. God, God is good. God. When He says He will deliver you, He will deliver you. Yeah. And one thing I know too is that when you have opportunity to do good, do good. Yeah. Don't True. be tired. The Bible says that don't be weary in well doing. Yeah. For in due, due course season. or in due season you will reap if you faint not. Yes. The word is faint. Yeah. Because people have done it and they've stopped doing it. Yeah. Because of the discouragement, the things they've heard, mm. they've seen, they've gone through. Yeah. They've stopped doing it. But mm. you don't have to stop doing it. Yeah. You don't have to faint. Yeah. That saved me. Mm. That saved me. Mm. Um, how selfless I've been yeah. and how helpful I've been to people, my generosity and everything. I mean, it was like a memorial on an and investment God, It's account. as if God had prepared the doctors for you. Yes, yes, everybody. You, you the know. doctors and the nurses. I had the right ones. Yeah. And even the one who is the head of the reconstructive and plastics uh, department or unit at 37 happens to be a brother I grew up with. Mm. So the attention I got. Um, but one thing too is, if God has given you a favor, yeah. he's giving it to yeah. you. And um, all the nurses and doctors and the housemanship, um, let's say the doctors who were on rotation and practicing for the first time or on training, they, were all, they all fell in love At with At what me. point did you see your ties um, smelling or something? Oh, yeah, then, uh, no, 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 my, my ties became infected. I became infected. Yes, 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 yes. It became infected. But, but proud to that, mm. I saw a rapid healing. Mm -hmm. I saw my, my skin. When, when Yes, when they take me to the treatment room, I could see the development, the growth. Even the nurse who attended to me most of the time would open my bandage and would say, ah, Eugene, God is with you. Oh. Then suddenly, the healing that we saw reversed. Mm. I've not seen it before. The places that were getting dried up became watery again mm. and became infected. My left thigh became so bad, it became infected to the extent that you could, if I have to use the word, you could even scoop my skin hey. out. It was, I mean, they opened... Was it smelling? Uh, uh, I mean, that, that, that one, you know, even if they've, they've done dressing for me, and, and at 37, we do dressing twice in a week. So the interval, the longest will be four days. Even at that period, at one point, when they opened the bandage, the left thigh Maggots. Maggots. Went, um, it's, it's terrible. Oh it started God. coming out. They were dropping down. And, and you were watching? <laughs> I was, I was what, what did you do when you saw maggots? In I mean, I was time? scared. The reason why I was scared, the bed that I lied on at mm. that light ward, mm. the person that was there before I was brought, he had terrible maggot visitation. One on of, the bed? Yeah, his, his hand. Um, apparently, he had been somewhere before he was brought to um, 37. So I think when he got there, it was a, a little bit late. So when they took him to the treatment room to remove the bandage to dress him, when they removed the bandage, then the hand got disjointed from the body. You don't mean yes, it? Yes, the, the maggot and worms had eaten. Had eaten the, and, and dislocated yes, it this, um, out. It, I mean, it got it, I mean, separated from the, the body. Hey, it and it away. Not and so I've, I've, I was told you about it, the uh, maggots. I, I, in fact, I didn't witness his because when he was discharged before I was brought into yeah. the particular uh, ward and I used his bed, the yeah. same bed, and they told me Why the did story. They give you the same bed. <laughs> As for, I mean, when you are sick, you don't have an idea. At times, when somebody dies and take the person, in just like three, four minutes, another person will be brought. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so that one you don't have power. Agbo Kemba. <laughs> You don't have power. Hey, I we mean, are smiling, yes, but look yes, at yes. maggots in your thigh. Yes, my thigh, the left became badly infected to the extent that it was terrible. At times when they remove the bandage, the kind of um, fluid that comes out of it, it's amazing. Um, yellowish. Did they give you the explanation why it was They said it was an infe in infection. In infection. From where? From the bed? I mean, I don't know. Maybe... Um, my skin came into contact with um, my feces or something because I was on diapers. <sighs> I was on diapers. And so it was terrible. It was terrible. Everything went bad. When everything went bad. So and when you were praising God amidst those pains, what do you think gave you the strength? Obviously. Because your wife was saying that you used to yes, sing yes. Um, a lot. Yes, yes, yes. At the ICU. And yeah. uh, in fact, uh, the, the other patient, let me say my colleague, mm. I would actually move him into prayers because I have to uh. be praying and be singing. I didn't lose my, um, my praise wow. by the grace of God. Oh. In fact, that one, one thing the Holy Spirit does is that when you depend on him, mm. even in the midst of trouble, in the midst of maggots, maggots hey. you praise God because your faith becomes built up. Yeah. That's one thing the Holy Spirit does. Yeah. But when you sit and you cry through the pain yeah. and you forget uh, you lose the strength and ability to connect to the Holy Spirit. Mm. The devil comes in. Yeah. That's how come some become suicidal yeah. and eventually they take their own, their life. own lives. Yeah, because they, they, they don't get the strength to connect to the Holy Spirit. But one thing uh, that helped me was uh, right from the beginning, I connected to the Holy Spirit yeah. and I was keeping on, keeping on. Viewers, you have been listening to the testimony of Choir Master. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right. Welcome back. You have been listening to the testimony of our dear Eugene Atasam, aka Choir Master. Um it's not been easy, but the Lord has been faithful. Please share this video to bless families, friends, and loved ones. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, TBL TV. Like, comment, and share. You will never be the same. Hmm. Now, but your life it's a testimony. It is. Me show one sound now. Yes, mm. today I can wear a shoe. Hey. It was difficult wearing a shoe. Yes, your wife was telling even, me that even this is the third time. Yes, yes. I never even had a desire because my legs and my veins, my nerves, yeah. my nerves have been damaged. Even your I'm, nerves uh, they've were gone. gone. They, they've gone. And so circulation. It will come back. Yeah, yeah, it will come back. Circulation has been bad. Um, it's amazing. I'm sitting. Yes, I'm, I'm, I am I'm not so, even yes. knocking. Wow, <laughs> your legs. Yes, yes. It's, it's been good because yeah. of the circulation. It's so bad yeah. that my veins, I feel terrible pains. They did reconstruction. Yes. So they had to take me to the theater mm. for, um, they call it meek skin grafting. Meek. Meek skin grafting. And so that's what they did. In fact, initially it was a difficult um, for them to get. Uh, a very good skin uh, yeah. place to scoop. Everywhere was gone. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. So, even, in fact, even where they took the skin, mm. it was bent, but it, was, it wasn't that bad. Eesh. So they managed to take it out of... Where? Which part I of mean, your body? I mean, my, my, your, your, my, uh, my, my stomach, wow. that side, that's in my rib. And then they took a, a bit from my thighs, um, this, play, uh, this portion. Eesh. That's where they took to do the mixed skin grafting. But something happened at the theater. Mm. I really didn't know. The doctor also hid it from me. Uh, but one of my friends, uh, my mate, my former mate at Accra Academy, he's now a physician assistant. Mm. He's with the Ghana Army. Mm. And um, the doctor told him that after the surgery, I didn't wake up. You didn't? Yes, I was dead. I was gone. You were gone? Yes. That's when you started seeing yourself. That was different. So I died like three times. You died like three yes, times? Yes, yes. And this is not a joke. This is real. The second one happened at the ICU. Hey. Yes. So I didn't wake up again. So and what the doctor said that how I came back to life mm. has been God. 
Mm. But my sister later told me that she had a dream. Mm. And in the dream, it wasn't a dream. Like she was sitting at the hall praying for me. Mm. And it's like she fell asleep. Kind yep. of. And then she saw, she saw me, my, my, my spirit had left my body. Mm. And it was like an angel of death. Like there were two. They yeah. we were coming to take the soul yeah. that, were, that had left my body. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she saw another angel. Mm. And she said it. She saw my father too, wow. my dead father. That's what she said. Wow. She saw in the struggling. Yes, in the room, struggling with them, and then they took my soul that had left my body from them, from wow. the yes. And then, and so I think I, that was the point that I came back to life mm. at the theater. Mm. And then at the ICU, mm. but something happened at the ICU. It was two things, terrible things. One. I, f I felt it, my body, I could feel the heat coming from my body. My, I was burning. Mm. So I, 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 I initially, burning I was about, I, I, yes, the scent came out. Wow. And they all didn't smell it. So I complained to the doctor and said, oh, this, they thought it was out of the medication. It was part of the hallucinations and the rest. And I, it happened again. The second time it was intense. And then the third time, I felt it. So a nurse entered into the room and she said, Bibi, she wa ha. Wow. That time it was unbearable. I mean, to me, I was in the aircon, but the intensity, my body, eh, hey, shit, in the inside. So I told the doctor that I feel the healing that I am receiving, the, the, the state of my healing. I feel it is reversing because wow. of the intensity of yeah. the heat from my tummy to my legs. Yeah. It was terrible. And then, You'll be there as you lie on the bed, you hear a sound. At first, I couldn't uh, point anything to the sound mm. till it, it happened a third time. Wow. And then, in the time the sound appears, mm. then something like an insect. Insect? Insect. Insect. Through the edges of the bed. Hey. It will go through the edges of the bed and then it will enter into my body. Wow. Yes, this you is not hallucination. not hallucinating. No, no, not at all. At all, at all. This is the confirmation. So when it leaves my body, I'll hear the sound around my colleague, the other person in the in same the world. with me in the intensive care unit. I'll hear the sound at his, at his bed. Immediately I hear the sound, then he will start screaming. Wow. He will be screaming. I did not catch anybody. Yes. Because what the, that insect did was, it goes into my skin and it's like I'm having a toothbrush. It will be scratching and scrubbing hey. my wounds. And what was that? I didn't know. But you see, it moves, it goes down to my ankle, under my foot, and come up again. So one day, I timed it and then I got, I got hold of it. You don't mean I it. felt it. And then it came out of my hand. It, it's so powerful that mm. it runs out of my, my palm. Hey, no, it didn't move you. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, if a gun person says, look your jane. Mm, look yes, then look your jane. You see, my own, uh, in fact, the whole thing was a spiritual attack. Yeah. And they followed me to the hospital. And it was, it was terrible. And God rubbished them. Yes, I mean. But God, the pain you went through. It's, it's, it's. it's so cool. how? Did the reconstruction turn out? In fact, I would say it was good, but um, you know, when they do it, you will lie without moving on the bed for weeks, let's say three weeks, mm. so that, I mean, the surgery would be perfected. Mm. And what something happened, as I did physio, my right leg, there was, a big hole came into I mean, my, my knee cap. A big hole? And a big hole. I mean, so if, when I go to the treatment room, the nurse would dip uh, a cotton into spirit and oh, push sure. it inside. It would wow. push it inside and... <laughs> I mean, I saw things. Uh, there's something they use, they call it Vaseline gauze. Mm. After the surgery, and I'd gone for about uh, two or three dressings, at a point, they had to remove the dead skin. You know, when 
when yeah. my started healing yeah. beautifully yeah. they had to use spirits to um, to remove the dead skin on my right leg the down when the nurse started removing when she, she got to that point she saw the vaseline gauze hanging so she thought it was a normal thing so she decided to remove it but as she pushed she couldn't pull it hey. she did not knowing the vaseline gauze the skin had grown in, and, and, in, and covered the, it. it covered it wow and the day they removed it the blood that came out so they had to use their clippers whatever to pull it then they told me it would be painful so i should but she was also afraid that um what to her oh, it, it will be it will get it the 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 greater portion will still be in the leg so she had actually had to take her time and open the place up a bit and then <laughs> she uh, she managed to uh, Come mean, on, and bring it up yeah, mm. yes but as i was in the icu mm. at a point i was lying down i felt so weak mm. then all i saw was I was in a place. Yourself? People gathered, yes. Mm. People had gathered and were crying. Wow. And one of my friends that I was in the university with, uh, she's a very good sister. She was crying uncontrollably. So I went to her. I called her that this is me. I'm not dead. They, are, they said I'm dead. They are crying. Look at me. Am I not the person standing wow. in front of you? She couldn't see me. Wow. I'll, go, I'll get closer to her, try to hold her hand. You can't. But, hey. and she was, then I'll move to the next person. I'll do the same thing, but they were not seeing me. Then I came to a place like Medina Market. <laughs> and a friend I've been in church with for so many years, we've served in the youth ministry. Mm. I saw him descending from the footbridge. Mm. So when he landed, he saw my poster, <laughs> like you are dead yes yeah they've done my poster yeah and he saw it immediately he saw my poster then he started crying then i went to him i wanted to embrace him but it was not working Eesh. and i was calling him edmund this is me i am not dead i am not dead i'm not dead <laughs> how i came back to life has been god yeah and so the spirit of death became so strong mm so strong on me that I couldn't sleep. Nurses and doctors would be on me. They would be begging me, Mr. Tassam, sleep. And even medications that they gave me that could help me to sleep you and couldn't. sleep for hours. I would, and in less than 30 minutes, I would be awake because my spirit was fighting yeah. death. Uh, death, yes. And that's how it, it was, it was, it was, it was and, terrible. And God healed you. God and, and saved you yes. from the grips yes. of death. Yes, yes. Someone is watching us. Mm. They have gotten to a point that they don't have any hope. Mm. In a minute, what are you going to tell them? Yes, before I talk to you, something happened. Mm. The word of the Lord is true. Yeah. And as the Bible says, it's sharper than two edges. That's sword. true. It works. That's true. I mean, if you are a Christian mm. and you go through terrible times, mm. don't lose your Bible. Mm. What I mean is that run through your bible away mm. or don't forsake your bible that's true hold on to your word mm. at a point i told my wife she should bring my bible to the world yeah. and she brought the bible to me mm. but it was lying down mm. now be praying and one day the spirit of death mm. as it was so strong and mm -hmm. intense something told me to read the bible mm -hmm. and god is true when i held the bible and i opened it i didn't have any scripture in mind mm. but when i opened the bible it's a verse I've read and I've read and I've read, but God used it to deliver me. Mm. It was Isaiah 43. Mm. And the verse one, it, say, it says that, I mean, I know you and I have called you by name, by name. and I have redeemed you. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is that when you read the verse two of the same Isaiah 43, mm. it talks about when you go through the water. I will be there with so you. God used one scripture to communicate to, yeah. to me that, I have redeemed you. Yeah. You've been through fire, fire. And this is what is happening to yeah. you. But I am with you. That's it. As the Bible says, no, I'm with you always, always. even to, the, to end. the end of age. So the moment I read that scripture, mm. something left me. That's it. And the I spirit so of death happy. checked out. Immediately I took my phone and went to YouTube and I started listening to music again. Wow. My spirit was revived. Yeah. 
and everything changed. At that time, I had grown so lean. Look mm. at me that I've grown lean. Mm. I'd grown lean, and my, let me say, my, my chest had caved in. And <laughs> I want to use words that people will get the picture well. Yeah. And so caved in. So yeah. you just can't imagine. me <laughs> <laughs> but we thank God yes. for life. Yes. Look, we are smiling or we are laughing today. Yes. But look at what you went through yes. within seven months seven in the months hospital. In the hospital. From one phase to the to other. other. To the other. But in all, you didn't lose your praise. I didn't. There is something I want to read from Psalm 147, mm. verse 11. It says, mm. The Lord delights in those who fear him, mm. who put their hope in his unfailing love mm, jesus jesus when you fear god you give him delight mm. and that is what god did for you exactly so he saved your life because yes. you feared him yes exactly. if you are listening to us fear god mm. so that whatever you go through mm. he will save your life exactly. people walk on this earth as if there is no god mm. you do what you want you go where you want. You behave anyhow, thinking that there is no God. But know that man is like grass. Yes. Today, we come up, tomorrow we wither. But if our hope and our life is hidden in Christ and in God, in times of trouble, he will save us. Because that is what he does. Yeah. If God cannot save, then he is not God. Yes. If he can't deliver, then he's not I'm God. giving you one minute to encourage somebody, then we'll wrap up. Mm. Thank you, woman of God. God is God. He is alive. Mm. He did it for me. Yeah. We were three that were admitted at the same time, mm. all bands, but I'm the only survivor. Mm. They are all gone. But when I analyze the whole situation, mm. I look deeply into their lives. I realize one thing, not that I am handsome or whatever, but when you know and uh, you learn how to connect to God yes, in the midst of trouble, that's true. He comes in to save you. Mm. And I thank God that I didn't lose my praise yeah. in the midst of it all. I pray the Lord. Mm. And I'm one particular person, even if I have thousand pastors who come to pray for me on a particular issue I am going through. I myself I pray as if I've never been prayed for. That's it. That's one thing That's about good. me, and yes. I will encourage you to do that. That's good. I mean, um, do things yourself. Mm. Learn to be on your feet mm. and do things yourself. Mm. And one thing, the good that you do, it will speak for you in time of trouble. That's true. And a woman saw me after one of my dressing sessions, when I got out of the t um, treatment room and I was going towards the car. She called me. She, she, she wasn't a friend. She's now a friend. And she said, God saved you because of your good heart, mm. because of the things you've done for people. God used it, and God saved you. God delivered you. And so what I want to say is that keep on being good. Mm. Keep on being nice to people. Mm. Invest in people and mm. be patient, be tolerant, mm. adjust, accommodate people. Mm. Mm. Do that a lot. And God will save you. Mm. Whatever you are going through, mm. know that He is God. Mm. He is the omnipotent. Yeah. He is the omniscient. Yeah. He is the omnipresent yeah. God. He is God. And mm. He's God all by Himself. That's it. He's the uncreated God. Mm. And He created you and He created all things. He will do it for you. It's a matter of time. The Bible says that He makes it beautiful in His time. Keep on waiting upon the Lord. Keep on praying and depend on the Holy Spirit. Mm. When you wake up and you feel that you are alive, thank God and then commune with the Holy Spirit. That's it. Let the Holy Spirit teach you, direct you, and show you what to do. Amen. If you do it by your own self, mm. the end will be disastrous. That's true. Lean on the Holy Spirit. That's Learn it. how to fellowship and work with the yeah. Holy Spirit. And trust me, every solution you want or out of a problem you think it is impossible, the Holy Spirit will come in. He did it for me. I'm the only survivor. Three of us, two are gone. I am here. It tells you that God is God. That is God. I died on two occasions, but God brought me back to life. Amen. And believe, and one thing I want you to know, and I want you to have is that 
believe that God has placed you here for a for purpose. A purpose. We are not occupying space. When we just a bimu, nyami am our assignment. You have a mission on mm. earth, mm. and so get to know it mm. and tell yourself that even if I am dying. Mm. And once I have not fulfilled that mission, I I'm will. not dying. Mm. That is one thing I did for myself. I told myself that I won't die. In the midst of it, or oh, I told myself, me, 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 because I have something to do for the Lord. And God used it, and God saved me. Amen. And so, God is good. If you have not accepted him as your personal Savior, mm. Lord, please do that now. Amen. Maybe somebody came to you some years ago, or a month ago, and mm. spoke to you about Jesus mm. Christ. And you, you thought, oh, this one, I've heard it. Huh? The Bible says that it is a, it's a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of That's God. That's true. Maybe it will happen in a way that you will not be able to take it. So the time is now. Give your life to him. Mm. And trust me, it will make you beautiful. Amen. The job that you have, that you are on top of the world, mm. you will shock when you give your life to Jesus Christ, mm. what he will do. Amen. And to blow your mind. Amen. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He saves, he delivers, he heals, he redeems. Amen. And that is exactly what he did for me. Mm. I was in bends, but it wasn't only the bends. My liver was gone. Mm. My heartbeat was not mm. normal. My heart, I had a broken rib that had been infected. I was dying, but the Lord came in and he's made me beautiful. He will do the same for you. Amen. Only if you give your all to him. Amen. Amen. Man, God, thank I preach you. <laughs> all I want to say is that in his time, he makes all things beautiful. You know, the Bible says, trust in the, the Lord, Lord your God. God. Lean not, not on, on your, your own, own understanding. understanding. In all, all your ways. ways. In all your ways. In all your ways. In all your ways. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Yes. And he will direct your path. It is very interesting when God is directing your path. You will never miss your path. Mm. I hope these two episodes yeah. have really blessed you. Been a blessing. Come, Master, thank you so much. Thank you, man of God. In all your testimonies, you have proven that you really serving God and you know him. Because I do woman on no pay. Exactly. And you have given us a lot of life lessons. You have you have encouraged us and you have advised us. I pray that the Lord will usher you into the next phase Amen. of your ministry. Amen. God bless you. God bless you too. Aduba ko we are singing na. Amen. Na kakalin sempa. Amen. Then you papi the one one me right. Amen. Nyamin sha. God bless you. Yes. It's been a very fruitful episode. The previous one and this one. And I know you have not been the same. The testimony and the life lessons, the advices and the encouragement, I know you will never be the same. If you don't know Jesus, give your life to him and he will make you beautiful. I hope you have been blessed by this episode. Please share these videos to friends and loved ones. A lot of people were looking for choir master. Mm -hmm. Take our numbers and we will direct you to choir master. Because I remember myself, I was looking for you. <laughs> and by the message of God, the lady did that video. Yes, it's and immediately I connected. Yes. It's been fruitful. Yes. God yes. bless you for always making time to watch us. You will never be the same. Everything that is on your heart that you have prayed to God for, he's heard you and at the right time. He will give you your answers. Don't lose hope. Keep faith alive. Mm. Go close to God and don't lose your praise. Mm. That will be yeah. all for this episode. See you same time next week. Bye-bye.